Hi everybody and welcome to the Mental Toughness and Body Show. My name is Rob Evans and I'm your weight loss coach, health strategist and internationally published author, helping take your life, your business, your body, your health, your wellness from where you are right now to where it is that you want to be. And today we're going to talk about focused excuses. What do I mean? How much time do you spend focusing on your excuses? Because I'm having a lot of current discussions with new people that I haven't met before that maybe need to lose somewhere between 10 to 20 kilos of fat, uh, which would completely transform them, completely make them so incredibly happy with the bodies that they have. And yet, the more that I, I dig into asking questions about what it is that they're doing, I find out that there's a lot of excuses in there. And they say the excuses with so much passion that it just makes me think, how long have you been living like this? How long have you been living a, a life of excuses? And if you're making up these passionate excuses... What other areas of your life are you doing this as well? So I'm going to use a, an illustration of a conversation that I had with a, a young lady today. Now, she wants to lose about 20 kilos of weight. Now, before I met her, I did a phone consultation with her and she told me that she wants to... Uh, lose some weight, but the numbers aren't really important to it. And then I think I might have talked about this uh, a couple of days ago, either on, it's either on this podcast or my Rob Evans 365 one. And I, I drilled in a little bit deep and I said, well, if it's not uh, the number on the scales, I said, what about size of clothing? Well, I don't really judge by that. I just want to, you know, feel really good about myself and... Uh, you know, and then she was talking about something else and then threw in about the 15, 20 kilos. I said, oh, okay. Um, I said, so you said you weren't really focusing on the numbers, but you've just told me that you want to lose uh, about 20 kilos. She said, yeah, look, uh, but yeah, it's just really important for me to feel good about myself. And we were talking and talking. I was asking her a bunch of different questions. And all I'm getting is really a sense that this person probably really wants to lose 20 kilos um, doesn't want to focus on that too much because if she doesn't get close to that, she's going to feel like a failure. And she kind of just wants to feel good about the way that she is and uh, you know, be happy in being overweight and finding a way to come to terms with that. And I suppose feeling good about knowing that she's in a good routine. So and had all the answers under the sun with the food, um, seems to be you know, eating really healthy, exercising really well, but needs to do some strength training. I said, okay. So then uh, today I met her, and uh, we were talking afterwards, and uh, you know, she's got some back problems, she's got some uh, hip issues as well, and lovely lady, and... Um, she was asking me, you know, what the program involves, and I was explaining it all about we want to do three days of strength training. Oh, I couldn't do three days. Okay. Um, how many days do you think? Well, yeah, maybe one. She said, because, look, uh, you know, my husband, he gets home late, and, you know, by 7 o'clock, which is when our group class is on a, a couple of days a week, she says, I'm uh, just too tired. I said, okay. So I said, well... What I would do for you is create a program that you would do at home by yourself and it could take anywhere between 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes and you could do that on the other couple of days a week. The point is that I want you to be doing strength training. I just explained the impact that it has on the metabolism. Then we were talking about the cardio and I said, look, based on what you've told me, you're actually over-exercising and you're under eating the right foods at the moment. And this is why you know, you're, you're not really going anywhere. Because she told me how frustrated she was that um, she's doing all the right things in her mind and nothing's happening in terms of losing the weight. So keep in mind, this is the same person that said the numbers weren't important. But 
is, you know, having this battle with herself about not achieving any change. And she wants to feel good, but she's only going to feel good if she moves the numbers. So you can see why there's a bit of a battle going on here. So then we, we spoke about the water. Oh, no, I drink lots of water. I drink... Um, I said, well, if you're drinking three litres a day, and she held up her bottle, said, I drink six of these a day. I said, okay, good. Well, I said, well, that's about 500 odd mils. So um, yeah, there's your three litres. Good work. Um, and we, we then started talking about the food. And I said, well, you know, the six meals a day. I said, tell me what you're eating at the moment. I said, look, you're only eating about four, sometimes five meals. You're not getting enough plant-based food. Your protein's probably not adequate either. So I said, I can see that there's uh, in, uh, opportunity to improve what you are doing right there, just in what you've told me. He said, well, you know, I've been thinking about doing this, uh, you know, quick diet so I can just, you know, lose a bit of weight quickly, again, numbers, uh, and then, you know, go back to doing something else. And I said, okay. Um, I said, here's the, the problem with that. And she was saying, oh, well, how long would I stick with, with yours for before going back? And I said, well, you wouldn't be going back. I said, the point is that I don't do diets. I said, this is about a lifestyle change and, you know, using food that you, your whole household, love. Not something that you're going to find really hard to do because you're not going to stick with that. And I said, I'm about getting you to implement uh, changes that you can sustain forever. Oh, my husband doesn't eat vegetables and I'm not cooking four meals. And I said, well, uh, here's the thing. They're individually tailored. And what we would do is find uh, foods, recipes that the whole family could eat. Uh, oh, no, nah, trust me. Don't get me started. He, he won't eat vegetables. And I said, well, look, sometimes it just requires a little bit of experimentation. And I said, look, a lot of people say they don't like vegetables because they've got, you know, the protein in one part, then there's just vegetables to eat. And, you know, then there's maybe some rice or something like that. I said, but say, for instance, it might be something like a stir fry where the vegetables are all mixed in together. I oh, wouldn't eat a stir fry. So, okay. I said, well, I'm just using that as an example. I said, what we would do is find things that maybe he would be prepared to give a go. And I said, look, um, I've had clients before that their partners have been in the same situation. And then all of a sudden, because of the way that it's presented and mixed and cooked, uh, they start uh, really enjoying the vegetables. And she said, oh, no, that won't be him. I said, well, look, at the end of the day, I said, it's, um, it's up to you how you want to handle that situation. I said, I get that it can be tough. Uh, but I said, the idea is that we come up with something that would suit as much of the household as possible. If it's a situation where it just means that you're going to uh, make your food, then you can make up batches of your food and put it in the freezer and then just, you know, you're always taken care of. Um, so, and you can, you know, make up batches of that so you're not at the dinner time making up batches of, um, uh, of other food for everybody else. You're just making their dish, yours is already done, so bang, it's easy. So it's easier than what you're doing at the moment. So I was getting a bit of pushback there. And uh, anyway, so uh, we kept on talking through a few different things, but the whole time I'm getting excuses and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And I said to her at the end, I said, look, only you really know what you have been doing and how long you've been feeling the way that you are. And I said, my job is to give you solutions and then hold you accountable to those things by having you complete a nutrition journal and uh, doing those things so that we can ensure that you get the best possible result. I said, it's not about doing a massive change all at once. It's about implementing small changes consistently so that you can fit it into your lifestyle. And it's a tiny adjustment here and there that's gonna make all the difference. But if we just pause there for a moment, you can already get a sense of perhaps why this person uh, has struggled uh, with their weight loss. I mean, from a science perspective, I know why they're uh, you know, not losing any weight because of what they're, they're currently doing. But 
uh, doesn't seem to be very open to anything that I was suggesting. There was an excuse uh, for everything. And I guarantee you this, if you've got excuses in this part of your life, which is you know, really important to you, I guarantee you, you're making up stories and excuses in other parts of your life as well. And I just wonder if somebody like this could perhaps stop focusing on the excuses and focusing on the solution and the changes, then what a transformational change that will have. But unfortunately, you've got to be ready and you've got to want the change. And not everybody's in that position straight away. And so we'll see. We'll see what happens with her. Honestly, I don't think she will continue with the program. She's got another free session next week. Um, I don't know whether she'll come back or not. I don't know whether um, you know, she'll continue beyond that. I think she's looking for a quick solution, something that's easy, and she wouldn't have liked what I was saying today because it's, it's a longer-term solution, but it's absolutely the right one for improving someone's health. But not everybody's ready to make the change when, when you know, the change is what's needed. So you can tell that there's a, there's a lot of different conflict in there and it's no wonder that the results aren't coming because, well, I do want to lose 20 kilos, but I don't really want to measure the numbers. Well, okay, so therefore you're really confused and you're not going to focus on the numbers. So you're not going to do everything that's required. And if your only goal is to feel good, well, you're screwed. Because guess what? Today you're going to feel good. Tomorrow you're going to feel like crap. In two days you're going to feel like crap because you're going to be so sore from the workout that we just did. And some days you're going to feel really fantastic. You could be getting some great results, but you feel really bad for whatever reason, whatever's going on in your life. So, you know, how do you measure that? Oh, I'm a 10 today in happiness. Tomorrow I'm a 3 or a minus 15 because of whatever's happened. Uh, it's not, you can't measure that. So... Um, that means that the focus is not going to be there to do the hard work when it, it may be required. When you think that, man, I really can't eat those vegetables today. I really can't be bothered going to do my training. I really am too tired to do X, Y, Z. Then you will quite easily find a reason not to do it. You'll make up a reason to justify to yourself why failure is acceptable. So my message to you today is how often are you focusing on your excuses? How often are you focusing on the results rather than the excuses? I can tell you for myself that I played a victim mentality for probably two decades in my personal life, making up reasons as to why I wasn't good enough to um, you know, have a girlfriend, be successful, be smart, have people like me, uh, why I was short, playing a victim that way, until I decided to take control of it and make a difference to my life. That's when life started to change and that's when I started to change my mindset. And even today, I still work on growing my mindset every single day, becoming a better person every single day, a better coach, a better dad, a better partner, a better friend? How do I get better at all of those things? How do I get better at uh, sculpting my body and having a better level of health? How do I do that? Well, if I focus on all of those things all the time, then I'm going to get those outcomes. But if I just make up reasons, play, play stories in my head as to why it is that it's not possible for me to achieve certain things, then guess what? you're always going to be playing that same old tune, that victim story as to this is why I am where I am and this is why I can't achieve what I want to achieve and I guess that's the way it is. I mean, you'll make up stories as, oh, I'm big boned, I have a thyroid issue, I have, whether you do or not. Um, you know, my mum had a thyroid issue so therefore that's probably why I have too. Oh, have you been tested? Do you definitely have a thyroid issue? 
Well, no. Um, I have um, polycystic ovary syndrome, so that's why I can't, I can't lose weight. Um, you know, I, you'll just make up things as to what you have as to why you can't achieve something. Now, I've worked with people with all of those things and they've achieved some remarkable resu results. So just because you are where you are right now does not mean that you can't achieve the level of health, the body that you want, all of those things. But you have to start telling yourself a different type of story. And that is a story of success rather than a story of excuses. So is that you? Do you tell yourself a story of why you can't have what you really want? Is that what you do? Because if you do, that's where you're going to remain. You're going to remain unsuccessful. You're going to remain upset with yourself. You're going to be frustrated, angry, disappointed as to why you aren't where you really want to be. And as a coach, I can tell you it's really painful to see people in that position because I know that I have a solution. But if somebody is not ready to listen to it, if somebody doesn't want it, if someone doesn't believe you, then they're not going to do the work. And the work is never going to be easy. But you can break it down into bite-sized pieces so it is super easy. Rather than seeing it as this massive thing that you've tried in the past and it's been so, so difficult to do that you can't do it again. Well, I would say this. What's the choice? The choice is to be angry, upset, disappointed, frustrated, unhealthy with where you are forever or you say it's time to change. It's time to change my tune and tell myself a different story because I'm sick of this old one. You've got to get to that point where you are so tired, so frustrated, so, so disappointed in where you are right now that it makes you change. It forces you to change and make a different decision. But only you can do it. Only you can make that decision. And I would say, if that is you, and you are in that place of excuse, then it's time for change. Reach out to me. Go to the mental toughness and body show .com, opt in for a free consultation, and let's start a discussion. Whether you sign up for a coaching program or not, let's have a discussion about why you're stuck where you are right now and how we can help you get to where it is that you want to be. Because it's an exciting, exciting process. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of courage to say, yeah, do you know what? I'm ready now. I'm sick of this. I'm going to change me forever. Stay safe. Have a great day. It's Halloween here in Melbourne, Australia today. Happy Halloween and watch out for the zombies. See you tomorrow.